flashing lights and smoke The metal rages on unspoken I love Girls put your war paint on Guys get your game face on Hearts lie on the floor battered and broken Come on, let's rendezvous at the new days Don't if you want to love like it's a revolution There's no need for armor There's no place for war Because it's love, love, love we're fighting for We're lies like animals in the street Hungry like cannibals for new meat mm -hmm. She looks the best, come on He beats his chest, come on Hands up if you wanted something deep A key. Come on, it's rendezvous Got the new days done If you want to love like it's a revolution There's no need for honor There's no place for Because it's love, love, love we're fighting for Hey now, it could be simple Darling, if we change how we look at love It's coming any day now There's a new way now Let me hear you say it now We've had enough Another day when it's all done When the walls come down and love has won mm -mm. It won't stop the pain you feel At least you know it's real Only you can tell when the time has come mm -mm. Come on, it's rendezvous At the new day's dawn If you want to love like it's a revolution There's no need for armor, there's no place for war Because it's love, love, love we're fighting for Hey now, it could be simple Darling, if we change how we look at love It's coming any day now There's a new way now Let me hear you say it now We've had Good morning, my name is Liz Jamison Dunn and I welcome you to the Hilltop Spiritual Center. And I hope this morning's service will provide for you solace and uplift your heart with Reverend Dr. Guy's message, the beautiful music, the meditation, and just being here sharing with us because we're all in this together and we're united. During these trying times, we know that we're challenged, but it is our job to remain uplifted, strong, and know that this too will pass in some form, some way. You're in the right place at the right time. I'd like to open service with prayer this morning, so please join with me. Dear beloved, as I look at this beautiful feeling of God through trees and through blades of grass and every leaf on a tree, in this beautiful setting, I know that God exists. I know that God is in my heart and in your heart. I trust that, I know that that gives me comfort and I know it will give you comfort that no matter what is going on, that we can really feel that support and that love and know that we're really not alone and that we're part of all of this and each other. So with this, welcome to our service. And so it is. Soul is where the fires of our passions burn. 
It is where our love is most alive. The soul longs for this deeper love, for a connection between form and formlessness, for a continuum between the earth and the divine. Benjamin Shield, and so it is. Once you've settled, close your eyes or soften your gaze and tune into your breath. Notice your breath without trying to change it. And notice also if you feel tense or relaxed without trying to change that either. Inhale through your nose and then exhale through your mouth. Continue to take deep, full breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth. As you breathe, become aware of the state of your body and the quality of your mind. Where is your body holding tension? Do you feel closed off or shut down emotionally? Where is your mind? Is it wandering or is it at home within the breath? Is your mind at ease or filled with restlessness, negativity, and doubt? Place both hands over your heart and continue to inhale through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Ask yourself, how does it feel to place my hands over this tender area, this place where I experience love for self and others? With each exhale, imagine you are releasing any negative thoughts that may be lingering in your mind. Continue to focus on your breath. On each inhale, think, I am worthy. On each exhale, I am enough. Let each inhale draw in self-love and each exhale release what is no longer serving you. Take a few minutes to breathe and recite this mantra internally. Notice how you feel as you say these words to yourself. If your mind wanders at any point, know that it's okay. It's the nature. Now visualize yourself standing in front of a mirror and look into your own eyes. What do you see? Pain and sadness? Love and joy? Naturally. Regardless of what appears in the reflection, tell yourself, I love you. You are beautiful and you are worthy of happiness. Know that when you see in the mirror in this moment, it may be different from what you see the next time you look. Imagine how, now how you can breathe into your heart and visualize love pouring out of your hands and into your heart. Let this love warm and permeate you from your heart center, filling the rest of your body. This is a beautiful opportunity to learn something new about yourself and tune into your physical and emotional needs. Let self-love enable you to build a stronger relationship. And so it is. Hello and welcome. So I had hoped for two things this week. One is that I would be back in the sanctuary filming this thing because of the wind and the different kinds of factors and we're not quite ready to be in there yet. And the other thing that I had hoped for is that my, something would happen to my hair and that hasn't happened yet either. So please bear with the hair and if you're hearing wind and, and we'll try to forge ahead. So we've been talking uh, the past couple of weeks about awakening to the energies of love. And, and today's talk is really personal because what I want to share with you is kind of where I am with this thing and what inspires me and what directs me. Because, you know, we're, we're all looking for wisdom. We're all looking to make sense of, of where we are. And I fall back into two, well, I, more than two fields, but, but two dominant fields, I suppose. I'm not even sure about that. But uh, one is this, is that, um, you know, new thought. I am an ordained new thought minister. The Hilltop Spiritual Center is an affiliate with a, a particular denomination of new thought. But you hear me referencing a lot these 16th century Spanish mystics, John of the Cross, Teresa of Avila, Ignatius of Loyola, and, and their progenies, Thomas Merton, Karl Rahner, Thomas Berry, and of course, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin. And for me, there's a bridge. 
there's a context to, to look at, at how there's a common ground in these of what the mystics may have intuited and what science is beginning to demonstrate. Um, you know, and I think that this is a, 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 a perfect time to begin to look at that because, uh, you know, um, if we think about where New Thought came from and where it is today, you know, New Thought has an interesting history. It, it arrived in this country, it grew in this country, it's sort of indigenous, around the time of the Civil War. And you had incredible luminaries from the American transcendentalists, Louisa May Alcott, Henry David Thoreau, and of course, Ralph Waldo Emerson and Hervin Melville. And then you also have these really interesting characters with great names like Wallace Waddles or Phineas Quimby or Warren Felt Evans, Emma Curtis Hopkins. It's sort of this garage sale of suffragettes and socialists and game changers, people of color, men and women, people of different orientations, all coming together. But a commonality that they understood was this, is that thoughts are both creative and causative. And what I mean by, by creative is that there's a, a muse, a genius that is latent within each and every one of us, that when it awakens, it awakens to vast potentials of, of things that we can accomplish and do that's not limited by the past, uh, you know, that, that is not bound by a precedent, but can break free. And that thoughts are causative, right? That what we think changes us and changes the environment in which we sit. And you know, I think new thought is poised to offer a level of wisdom and direction in alignment with what the mystics sort of intuitively known. And that is this, is that we live in an unfinished universe that has a very, very long history and has a really long future ahead of it. But doesn't it feel like this moment is powerful because of where we are and what's going on? Doesn't it feel like there's something about this moment? I believe that there is, but I also believe that it's within the context of all these incredible evolutionary events that have happened and all the other powerful and, event and, and uh, evolutionary events that will in time happen. But here we are, and there's an opportunity for us. And I think a level of caution that mystics would teach us and New Thought understood is something about the group mind. You know, the group mind is that tribal part of us. It has a good purpose, it's there to protect us. But, but how it protects us is to resist. It's defensive. The group mind is the thing that talks about what can't be done, like running a four minute mile, or going to the moon, or radios, or televisions, or flying through the air, or, or any of these kinds of things. It says we can't do those things and, until we do until someone says, hey, wait a minute, let me, let me try this. What if we, what, what if we do it this way? And, um, um, you know, as I reflect on this time, you know, there's, there are all the things that we, we, we feel that we are limited by, but, but let's think about this and how we've already challenged the group mind. As a planet, we have changed on a dime on how we work how we socialize, how we educate, how we interact and do commerce. On a dime, in the last, since March, uh, greenhouse gases have decreased nearly 20%. So uh, it's, it's not that things can't change, but you know, there's a, there's a, a thought about if they should change about now the, the group mind is talking about returning to normal. But, but I'm not, I wanna kind of explore that for a second and I wanna do it with something that I talk about often, which is this, that we live in a big bang universe, but our systems are antiquated. They're still based on this sort of hierarchical, top-down way of doing things. 
our systems are still at heart tribal and yet we're we're living in a new paradigm and uh you know where the where the group mind says we can't and the group mind says uh let's go back to normal uh change isn't going to happen at the level of the group mind it's going to happen at the level of the individual there's this great visual that i have about this do you guys remember the movie 2001 maybe i'm dating myself but if you haven't seen it it's it's well worth it but in the movie and in the book there's a character called moongazer and moongazer is sort of a semi-human he's not quite human yet you know he's got a big fur coat uh, but there he is sort of tinkering around with this bone and to sort of set the stage is that these uh, these semi-humans would uh, would gather at the water place but they would be driven off by predators or other tribes and and at night you'd hear them so or you'd see them sort of shivering and hiding as you'd hear lions or tigers whatever these animals were that were cats that were roaring in the distance and old moon watcher is or moon gazer is playing with this bone and all of a sudden he's holding this bone and all of a sudden he's using it as a tool and then the next thing you know he's using it as a weapon and all of a sudden his tribe his group is no longer afraid of the different predators they're not no longer competing for the things that they need they can advance and then he throws it in the air and this bone sort of spins into the air and then becomes a spaceship or a, a space station and that's evolution that's it right that's like the fire that is that is discovered and uh and so perhaps then like you you're not satisfied by going back to the normal because let's face it, normal didn't work for a lot of people. It didn't work for a lot of species and it doesn't seem to be working for the environment itself. And so instead of thinking about what was, instead of thinking about what we can't do, perhaps our vision is in what's possible. Uh, you know, it's, it's, this vision that we as new thought practitioners know of a global heart, of a world that works for all. One of my, my critiques of sort of fundamentalist new thought is this, is that it focuses itself so much on the, on the individual. You know, it's, it's my health, it's my wealth, it's my good, it's my happiness. And you know, when I think about that, really there's there's nothing wrong with desiring health and wealth and happiness and love and all those other kinds of things but how we go about doing it i think and here's a little heresy for you i think how we affirm wealth abundance our personal good really at the heart of it affirms a a, a deep abiding sense of separation and even a sense of lack. Because you know, something that the mystics intuited, something that we're beginning to understand more and more is this, is that um, the path that we are seeking, the path to where our good is, 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 is a transcendent path that is grounded in going back into our bodies not escaping from them. And it's a path into our body that falls in love with the world, with the planet that we live in, and sees our environment, like where I am right now, as an extension of our bodies. You've heard me quote often this line from Pierre Teilhard de Chardin that says this, Someday, after mastering the winds, the waves, the tides, and gravity, we shall harness for God the energies of love. And then, for a second time in the history of the world, humanity will have discovered fire. Now, what's interesting about that statement, other than just being this incredibly beautiful, moving vision, I think, is that Tehard wrote this during the time of the First World War. He was a Jesuit priest, but he was a stretcher bearer during the war. He was in Belgium, and he worked in a primarily uh, Muslim regiment. And he saw the horrors of war. 
He carried bodies off the field. He was there ministering to those Muslims who were lacking the, the chaplains that other people had. He was with them in their sorrow and in their death. He saw just what, what humans are capable of. But what he writes is he would take these long, lonely walks at night in a war. And he would grapple with deep questions about the divine and about evolution and about humanity and the good and about the power of love. And, uh, and it was there that he began to develop this idea of, of fire. You know, he worked on the discovery of Peking man. And what's interesting about those, that, those discoveries of those early bones, those early remains, is they are found within cinders, the remains of fire itself. And he understood that fire was a seminal moment. It was a, it was a game changer in our evolution. So when he talks about discovering fire again, what he's talking about is something that changes everything. Uh, Gastard Bachelard in his book, The Psychoanalysis of Fire, fascinating, says this. He says, we are almost certain that fire is precisely the first object, the first phenomenon on which the human mind reflected. Among all phenomena, fire alone is sufficiently prized by historic man to wake in him the desire for knowledge. And this mainly because it accompanies the desire for love. That the desire for love begins the desire for love, or the desire for knowledge initiates the desire for love. Because you know, to know someone, to know something, gives us the opportunity of loving someone or loving something. And, uh, you know, here we are on the spiritual path. And I think the, the spiritual path has two main components about it. The first is the search for truth of what that means. You know, in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, you will know the truth and it will set you free. And the word that is used, you've heard me say before, is the Greek word, because it was written in Greek, aletheia, which means without forgetting. So truth is remembering the essence of who we are. And the second thing is this, is, you know, the first is the, the, the search for truth, and the second is this, is how to manage our own personal power. And I believe that we, we have no idea how powerful we are. And mostly we have no idea how powerful we are because we really have no idea who we are. We are so caught and mesmerized by our false sense. That one that Thomas Merton says, you know, we want to present to the world. We want to have the world revolve around. And uh, uh, maybe, maybe if we can get in touch with our authentic self, if we can know who we truly are, then we'll love who we truly are. And that love will extend out into the world. You know, this great radical first century Palestinian that I follow makes this statement. Seek first the commonwealth of the divine. Seek first this, this vision, this yearning, this desire that this intelligent universe that is wanting to know itself in its creation align ourselves with that vision and, and how we live then. And then all things are given. The health, the wealth, the good. Because what we begin to understand is that my good, my happiness, my health, my well-being doesn't separate me, but engages me. That someone doesn't do without because I have, but there is enough. There is sufficiency for all and that we are not bound by precedent about how things were, by what the group mind is telling us, but we are given an opportunity for something new, a new vision of a world that works for all, an environment that is an extension of our being, where forgiveness is the norm, where there's a generous sharing of resources, 
where there's a resurgence in science and art and where there's world peace. You know, this Monday, May 26th, is Memorial Day. Memorial Day has its origins all the way back to the Civil War. It was originally known as Decoration Day because women primarily would go and they would decorate the graves of those soldiers who had fallen in war. And it's been a tradition since then that on this day, other than having barbecues and the beginning of summer and no longer wearing black but white, but beyond all those, we take a moment and remember those who have fallen in war. And my belief is this, what better way to honor them? What better way to remember them than to strive to break the group mind's idea of what can't happen and to begin to hold a vision of a world at peace, a world that collaborates, a world that honors the environment and each other of which we share and celebrate. And for that, let us pray. Let us, as Emerson says, prayer is the contemplation of the facts of life from the highest point of view. And to me, that is the highest point of view of a world immersed with art and science, a world where there is no lack, no loss, no pain, no suffering. A world where we move and grow and understand. A world where we celebrate diversity. And as we hold that vision of that world, we see ourselves participating in it. We see ourselves celebrating in it. We see ourselves as part of what is unfolding. And for this we are grateful. And so it is. Thank you once again for being part of our Sunday celebration here in the virtual world. You know, there's going to be some information coming out as we, uh, as a state and as a nation, begin to go into the next phase of what this looks like, of how we integrate. What I want you to know is, those of us here at the Hilltop Center, two things I want you to know. One is that we will not open the center until we deem it is safe. And we will do it strategically, and we will keep you informed the entire way. And, and as a result of that, the second thing to know is this, is that we're not ending this, this virtual community, that it will continue to grow. It will continue to be part of who the Hilltop Center is because I'm speaking to some of you who aren't living in Fallbrook. In fact, most of those of you who are watching this don't live in Fallbrook. And so I wanna to say to you that we are knowing you. I am knowing you. I am loving you. I'm excited to get to know you. So please contact us. Please let us know, let me know what you think and what's going on. And also visit our website because we've got many things to offer you. Guided meditations, yoga classes, music videos, uh, prayer support, not only the the Zoom meeting that happens Monday through Fridays at 10, but also if you'll see our newsletter and on our website, there's a way for you to request prayer and the practitioners and myself will pray for you and contact you if you'd like. So we're reaching out and we're building this. And we invite you to do your part too, which is to like us on Facebook, to like us and subscribe on YouTube, to let your friends know, start watch parties, get the word out, send this to friends and also, for your continual and, and generous support. We rely on you. It's important now more than ever because some of the income that we, have, that we were receiving, we're no longer receiving. And again, I wanna thank Joe Gillespie and Lee Coulter for their gifts of music today. And I wanna thank all those who have worked behind the scenes to make this celebration possible. I wanna thank our practitioners, I want to thank uh, particularly Liz Jamison Dunn for her beautiful meditation and invocation. Please know that all the practitioners are available for prayer. Please reach out. And I wish you a very happy Memorial Day. And let us all hold a vision of a world that works for all. And to you, 
and to those whom you love, and to those whom you receive love from. Many, many, many blessings. And I look forward to joining you here in this virtual world again next week. Patiently I wait, but that's okay Cause in the end I see that it's all great And that everything you are is what you got to say And the dreams that you dream Is what you want to be So consider all that is and what it shall be Awesome is the place that life abounds The make of all you are Turning in the ground It's somehow that I know who the blind Will free you We've got to come together now We've got to come around Dangerous. The journey long and goodbye is there But faith is all you need to get up in bed And did you notice my trembling fingers When it's cold at night and my bones start to quiver So keep in mind the lilies and the river Cause awesome is the place that life abounds Make of all you are turning in the ground It's somehow that I know the blind Will free you now We've got to come together now Cause all soon is a place that life will bound Make of all you are Turning in the ground It's somehow that I know the blind Will free you now We've got to come together now We've got to come around We've got to come Think about the world as one again No killing and no beating and no heavy regrets And good is all around for us to get And our brothers, they want to love each other And our sisters, they want to be with each other It's a dream, I know but I can't pretend About the leg of all you are turning in the ground, so am I that I know the blind for you now? We've got to come together now. We've got to come around. We've got to come around.